Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition of Beyond Dressing Well Live. I am your host, Mary Lou Andre, and we have another phenomenal program planned for you all this evening. We have Hank is in the house. I'm going to be bringing her on in a few minutes. But ahead of that, I just wanted to catch you up. I feel like so much has happened in the last week, so I'll go pretty fast. But uh, the first thing is a warm, warm welcome to our April cohort of 90 Days to Stellar Style. They kicked off on Monday night. It was It is a wonderful cohort. We set an intention to bring 12 women into this program. There are 12 in right now. And one of the announcements I wanted to make to all of you is stylist Kathy Smith. A lot of you have had an opportunity to work with Kathy. She's gonna join Sarah and Jen as stylists in that program, which opens up two more seats. So we can easily onboard anyone into that program for the first two weeks. You let Sarah I know, just drop 90 days in the chat below and one of us will reach out to you. The second announcement is we are enrolling for the June program. If you've been hanging around for a while, you know that this is a big part of what we do here, this program, and we're so proud of it. We are going to start enrolling two programs at a time because we already have three people booked into the June program, which Sarah can jump, um, put it in the chat. I think it starts June 18th. Um, but if you're interested, again, 90 days in the chat, and Sarah and I will jump on a call with you. And even if you're just curious, Sarah and I are happy to give you 20-minute style consult to just find out a little bit more about you, give you some points and share with you all the services, all the programs that we have that might be able to serve you. So that's one announcement. The second announcement is I am in USA Today. It hasn't come out yet. I announced that two weeks ago that I've been interviewed by USA Today. And you never know. Hank, our reporter, is going to be on in a minute. And she, she knows more than anyone that you can't bank on interviews. Um, but I just saw it. The reporter sent it to me and all of my tips, they asked me to include three tips on how to create a better closet and all three of my tips made it. So as soon as that's out, Sarah will drop that in the chat next week. She'll drop it in our Facebook group, but that is super exciting. I'll also be in Nashville next week. I'm speaking at my first women's conference in over two years. And one of the other presenters is Gabby Bernstein. And I just finished her book. Very interesting. So I'll be in Nashville next Friday. I actually fly out really early Thursday morning. So I we won't have the live next week. Maria will do a replay. And then I thought I would come back the following Wednesday with a full report of what I saw at the conference, what people are wearing to conferences these days. Of course, you know I'll be doing a little shopping in Nashville. So I'll do some show and tell. Uh, and that leads me to my next announcement, which our new blog which is work return to work style five tips for helping you reevaluate your wardrobe and get it office ready for those of you returning to offices that went live this week it's got awesome photos in it we'll do a whole program on office attire i think i'm going to ask uh, hank a few questions about that too because it's just uh it things have dramatically changed so that's up and the last announcement, let me see, I'm looking at my white, my cheat, my cheat list over here. The last announcement, and then we will bring on Hank, is I am on crutches. Swear to God. I got a really bad infection. I was just telling Hank, came out of nowhere, was doing a a call yesterday, our Thrive Group Leadership Program. It's one of the, we, we meet once a month. We always meet on Tuesdays. It's like one of the happiest days of my month. So I wasn't going to miss it. So I was on the Thrive call. My leg had been hurting before that, but I didn't pay it much attention. I got really involved in the conversation on the Thrive um, Group. And I looked down at 5.30 and my foot was blown up. So off to the, the emergency room, I went. Um, and for those of you that have been on the call, you know that I also got a nasty blister when I did Bella the Ball. So I think the universe is telling me to slow down. Um, I ended up today, I took, a, I had a really nice day. We just came off of launching 90 Days to Stellar Style, which is just so awesome because we get to teach reach talk to so many people when we're enrolling in the to get to the 12 we talk to so many and it's always a blast but i think the universe was saying we also moved my mom this weekend which is no small feat 
for those of you that have moved recently. So I think the universe was telling me to slow down. I heard it. My good friend, Kristen, who I'll be in Nashville with, told me to get some lavender. So I got my lavender candle. I went and did a lot of reading today. I just took it easy and I was chatting with Hank. I was supposed to be at Hank's house today. We always do this week before. Hank is now, this is her fourth time on the show and you guys all love her and she's got beautiful clothes. So I was very disappointed that I couldn't go to Hank's house and Hank was like, I'll just interview you. So when do you, how many times does an award-winning journalist offer to interview you? So I think the universe paid me back by slowing down, getting a little bit more centered, celebrating, because we have so much to celebrate this week and we're heading into Easter and Passover. It's just such a beautiful time of year. I thought, yep, we're going live. I'm not canceling. You guys show up, so we show up. You know that's our MO over here. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome Hank. Hello, Hank. Come on on. Oh, my golly. It is so great to be here and so lovely to see you. I'm so glad you're recuperating. Poor thing. Crazy. I still, don't know, I, was, I still don't know what it was. They thought it might be a tick, a spider bite. I'm thinking that I got, I was moving my mom this weekend. I broke a glass. I think maybe it's a tiny piece of glass that just blew up, but I was on antibiotics at the hospital last night. I'm home. My husband watched me like a hawk. I tell you guys everything. He took me to get a blow dry around four o'clock. When my hair looks good, I can do anything. So yeah, I wonder how you can still look so fabulous. You know, I'm looking, when I look over here, I'm looking at the comments. Um, and it's so nice to talk to someone who was at the Dress for Success event at Holy Cross. Oh, that's so oh. Nice. I can't always see who the names are because they haven't allowed StreamYard to use their name. So if I don't refer to you by name, that means I'm just not seeing your name. Oh, and I'm going to probably, you know, I was thinking that so it's weird right now, but so many of my friends are getting that same message from the universe that you did, that you're doing too much, just slow down a bit, just take it easy. And we all need that time to sort of refill the well to prime the pump. Okay. You can't, you have been working nonstop, think about it, day and night for two years without yeah. stopping. And at some point, you know, you just have to say, I'm just going to read a book today. I'm just going to relax. Yeah. And I did, Hank. And that's for the people that know me. Lisa Duncan, if you're on the line, Lisa's my good high school friend. I don't fight infections well. I don't get sick all that much. I mean, I had that horrible illness a few years ago. But when I get a cut, Hank, my immune system, it, it's, I just can't fight it off. So Yes, I slowed down and I really had a lovely day. My husband waited on me hand and foot. That was really fun. <laughs> You're the only person who could look so glamorous and be so beautiful and all oh. the stretches, you know, the, the, the ones that you got last night for, for heaven's sake. So you should have seen me last night. It wasn't so pretty, but, um, you know, I'm here. And the other thing I just wanted to give a big shout out to Lori Sanborn who, um, and part of it to Hank's point, I love what I do. When we had, I had so many calls on Friday and then we had calls on Monday about the program. And I gave everybody a half hour, 40 minutes, cause I love it. But one woman, Lori Sanborn, who I talked to, she said, I said, how long have you known me? I hadn't met Lori yet. She goes, I've been on your mailing list forever. And she said, I heard you at the Boston Chamber of Commerce. And you said that, and this was probably 12 years ago. She said, you said that animal prints were neutral. So I'm wearing this top for Lori Sanborn. <laughs> That animal prints are neutral. That is interesting. I know we're going to talk about clothes in a minute, but let me just ask you before that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's interesting how your concept of clothes, like when did you know mm -hmm. that you had an eye for this, not only for clothing for yourself, but for how other people's styles might evolve? And, you know, you, I know you look at people and think, nope. Don't, that's not a color for you. That's not a color for you. That's not a shape for you. That's not a style for you. Try this, this, and this. And it's, I know it's not magic, but when did you know you had it? Um, I, my childhood memories are playing in my mother's closet. Like that, you know, and it wasn't that my mom was that um, fashion forward or anything. I had um, some pretty sophisticated women in past generations. My grandmother um, lived in Manhattan and I remember being in my mom's closet and then my mom had a lot of her mom's stuff. And I just remember the gloves, the hats, but it was the texture, the feel. And I, those are my childhood memories of really just playing. And then when I got into high school, like back to school shopping, I just have these memories of being at Marshall's, Marshall's in Canton. And 
being with, some, I think we went with the Avery family and the Marsh family and lining people up. And like, it wasn't about me. I was like running and bringing clothes back and forth. And then my mom always let me really always loved my opinion of her clothing. And then I and always let me help her, which was really great. I still help her. Um, and then my aunt Joan, who's on these calls, she's probably on, uh, she lives in Florida and she had a really strong sense of style and color. And she gave me uh, my first fashion books. And I always say she had so much confidence in me, which was such a gift at that age that she allowed me to give that gift to other people. Did you play with dolls or did you cut out paper dolls and put clothes on them? Did you design clothes mm -hmm. or is it more about seeing how they work artistically on real people? Yeah, that is a great question because a lot of people ask me that. I cannot sew to save my life. I asked for a sewing machine one Christmas and my husband, he's like, he, he can do anything. He uses the damn sewing machine. I've never used it. No, it was never about that. I, w I was actually um, a tomboy, Hank. Okay. I played sports. I ran the streets with all the boys in the neighborhood and the girls. We had a great neighborhood. Um, no, it was never about dolls. It was never about cutouts to me. It was always about texture, feel, pattern, real people, watching movies, um, reading books, Vogue magazine, you know, just absorbing how this like I'm sure it's the same way with someone that decorates a home mm -hmm. but for me it was always how it translated onto real people it's interesting because I used to read Vogue with my mom she was very very stylish um, and I remember being maybe 12 or 13 and, and having and saying to her no one would wear this you know no one would wear what's in this magazine and she said no no you're not looking at what they're wearing you're looking at the length of the skirt you're looking at the shape of the shoulder you're looking at how the waist is or whether there's no waist you're looking at all you know whether they're wearing stockings or you know how the high you know the shape of the shoes and the heel of the shoes it's not about those particular clothes which are runway clothes but it's how to take the essence of those clothes and turn them into clothes for you um, does that how you do it or how much does trend style, what's in Vogue, what's in Elle, what's in Mary Claire, how do the, how in style, how do those magazines, how do you know what's cool? Let me just ask you that. How yeah. do you know what's cool? Again, your, your question is so great. Um, I honestly um, can roll out of bed and know this, like it, it's weird. I can walk into a store and I do, cause I, I, it's very visual. It's like going to a museum for me, but I can walk, I'm in Needham. I'll hit, you know, I'll go over to Neiman's in Natick and I'll, I can go in like in January and know what's gonna be trending in September just by what's in there, what I, and plus I work with very sophisticated people like yourself. So I see, you know, I've had an opportunity to really handle very high end clothing. Um, so I know, um, I just know, I, I don't even know how to explain that because it's not like people ask me, I don't study anything. I, the fashion, I'm, I love business. Like I love running the company. I love the marketing, the sales, all of this. So I spend a lot of my time, like today I watched a two hour, um, you know, marketing, um, marketing online class. Like that really turns me on. The fashion stuff is my heart. It's the ease. It's the roll out of bed. Um, I, but the shape of the clothes and when you have had the opportunity, like I have, to really handle high, high end clothing, you start to understand what a shoulder does to a garment, what a lining does to a garment, what a drape, what a cut. So for me, it's all about how the cut, the silhouette and the styling details sing to one another. It's very much a symphony for me. And then I become very, like to your mom's point, then I become the realist. And you know, I do that, Hank. So I go all out and you are so fun. And we go, like, we put these outfits together and then Hank's like, where am I going in this? I'm like, well, you look great. Remember this, the white linen high, high waisted pants and white, gorgeous white sweater, and this gorgeous pale tan leather belt with a gold buckle. And I looked at myself yeah. and I'm like, this looks great. I can't move. I, I would get mustard on this in one, in one minute. But it did look really, and I never, it did look really, really good. And I never would have thought of it. And someday I will wear that. There will be the perfect place. Um, right. And that, but you also, you all, I'm looking at the comments over here and they all go, yes, love this, love this, love this. Um, sometimes I'll pick up a, a pair of jeans and say, mm, 
I don't think this is going to look good anymore. And then I think, why would you think that, Hank? And I don't really know. You know, it just doesn't feel right anymore. Is that the kind of sense that you get from time to time? Uh, yeah, I can usually, well, my process ahead of the season is to go in my closet and really play. Oh. And I could put on a pair of pants and say, nope, that's done because I know that the silhouette's being more relaxed or that skinny pants, you know, worth hanging on to because um, it's so high quality that the, the, the waistline is correct. Like I'm holding on to those because I can just put, you know, a long top with those, you know, so I do. And then it is easy for me to retire stuff. And then I'm always happy. Talk about that a little bit, a minute though, because it is, you know, for some people, it isn't easy to retire stuff. You look at something and you think, oh, I always loved this. I love this. And you put it on and it's not quite right. And you think, well, maybe someday it'll be okay. How do you deal with that? So I do it a lot in your closet. You probably don't even know it. Um, Hank has beautiful things. And Hank allowed me and Sarah went in a couple of years ago now and really got rid of, we call it the dead wood. The stuff that, you know, she knows shouldn't have been there. But when you're dealing with, and, and my wardrobe's in good shape. No, you know, it's not like I have to get rid of stuff. I never want the feeling of so much. So that's what drives me. And I want to give that gift to a client. So with someone like you, we have that whole attic space. And we've, um, I've, I've done it very strategically, Hank. And you and I just have a thing. I, I You know what I'm doing. But we've made this like almost museum-like place up there. And because I've handled it, I remember the color. I, that That is a gift. Like I can remember color. I can remember, you know what I do. I say, don't you have that upstairs? I, I have, this has happened so many times, you all. She'll say, why don't you wear that with those with those wine red suede <laughs> Louboutin? And I say, I don't have that. And you're like, yeah, you do. And then you pull them out. And I think, Oh yeah, I, I do have those. I mean, I've had, I've been a television reporter for 43 years now. And for many of those years, I would say 30 of those years, I was given a clothing allowance as, mm -hmm. you know, not salary, but as part of my job, a clothing allowance that I had to spend on clothes. So there's a problem for you. I loved it. But at that point, because of that, there's a lot of accumulation of things. Um, right. And I began to see that it would be better to choose a really high quality, you know, two things than marginal quality, 10 things. Right. So for for myself and for you, like my and I said this on the live lap, we were doing a thing on closet organization. Like I have a lot of clothes. No joke. I come here every week and show you all. And I love my clothes. Hank loves her clothes. I don't have them in my everyday closet. But like the last time you were on, I wore that leather dress, that vintage leather dress. Like I don't go prancing around in that. It's 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 too heavy. It's actually it's not that comfortable. It's just vintage and it's beautiful. Like I will never get rid of that. I will never get rid of my Chanel jacket. I will never get rid of. I have an amazing Celine suit that I wore on my book tour, and I don't wear the jacket, but I wear the pants all the time. But I keep it in my other closet together. And when I have time, I'll say, oh, those killer black pants will look amazing with a short crop jacket because I'll put a long tail with the short cropped over the skinny pant. So to me, it's all about being organized and visiting my clothes before I spend. But to your point, there's I don't get rid of the really beautiful, high quality stuff. I set it. I, I have it organized. But the stuff like, for instance, white T-shirts, Hank. Like I'll, I go through and get rid of those right now. And then sometimes I'll add a few more. Sometimes I won't because maybe I don't want to do white t-shirts this season. Do you ever buy more than one of a thing if it's perfect? I know you do. Uh, <laughs> I don't tend That's to do that. I, you know, and you're, most, a lot of people do that. I personally do not um, because I like clothes so much, but I'm also a minimalist, believe it or not, like in my core wardrobe, like even in my drawers, I only really have six pairs of jeans that I wear and the whites aren't even in there yet. I, I, but I've got the whites handy because every once in a while I wear a white jean in the winter. Like I wore white jeans with a really fun cream turtleneck this January. I did the brown boots with it, you know, really cool coat, brown hat, but I knew the, where the white jeans were. And I had a little bit of time. I mean, we all dress for our friends, right? <laughs> more than the spouses but i was going out with friends and it was a really cool look but i don't have those white jeans in my everyday closet i don't like to have tons of stuff and the other thing is i'm one to refresh um quickly and when i'm going on a trip i get the rack out three weeks ahead of time and then i'll say i need some white t-shirts no i don't do the whole like 
big amounts. I don't do that. Well, if I find a perfect t-shirt, I'll get three of them, three perfect white t-shirts, because I'm certain that whoever makes them is going to stop making them. And then I'll never be able to buy them again. But having said that, guys, because Hank does buy a lot um, of the same, which I which actually I love when I'm playing. You don't believe the stuff I can make because if it's, a, if it's her, we know her neckline is a crew neck. That's her, her favorite neckline. Like, I'll never forget the green uh, field jacket. Yeah. She has this amazing green field jacket that I was going crazy. We had it on the show last spring. And I'm like, do you have a lilac, one of those Gap t-shirts? And of course she did because she has every single color. So that is super fun for me when I could just like call it up and say, I know you have that color because you have well, that. Well, that's because they were on sale for $5 and I just got every color. I mean, what are you going to do? They're perfect t-shirts. That's what they're called. And they were yes, $5. I'm have. sorry. I'm getting the lilac one. Let me... Um, you know, since you were uh, since you were not able to come to my house this morning, I, um, I had to commandeer you to do this live. And okay. you all, when I look over here, I'm looking at the comments. Sally says, "I used to go through Vogue with my mother-in-law." That's so nice. Um, isn't that a sweet memory too? I mean, that is clothes can be a real way for us to connect with grandchildren or daughters and sons or for them to connect with us. It's really nice. And also to learn about styles and fashions from other sort of generations. I have my grandmother, a stack. I think my grandmother must have been sort of like me because she had a lot of them. I inherited her white cotton gloves and I have a a stack of them still <laughs> in the still in the packages from her in I case white and cotton white cotton spring gloves ever come back which they won't but nevertheless they remind me of her and they still sort of have that lilac-y fragrance you know for, yeah. that oh, can't be but it's powerful like, hank i mean yeah so many people you know one question that i have gotten when i've been interviewed is like what is your biggest pet peeve about oh. fashion and what came to me the first time it was ever asked of me, it was just so authentic. So I'll share it here. I was like, when people try to dismiss it as not being important or relevant, I mean, I just think it's such a great tool of communication and confidence and family and fun and creativity. And I'm with you. I mean, if life is so crazy. Your closet should not do anything but bring you joy. Just, well, look how happy you we all are when we look good. And you know there's a moment when you, if you have on the right thing and you look in the mirror and you think, oh, I am ready. I can do anything. Watch me now. Right. And, I don't, and I think that's a real thing. It's not pride. It's confidence. It's knowing that you look right for the occasion, for the moment, and that you have the confidence that you know what you're doing. And we are all so grateful to you. Oh, for Oh, you know, it's energy, the clothing, like I'm getting ready to present at this conference, which is, you know, I'm a little nervous. I haven't been in public and doing something like this. What I'll do, like probably starting Sunday, I will put on my outfit. Uh, I will practice in front of my mirror and I'll get, I'll put some music on. By the way, put in the chat. They just, they just wrote to me about 20 minutes ago. They want to know what my entrance song is. No one has ever asked me what my entrance song okay, is. What is your entrance song? But you guys can think about it. The only one I could think of was these boots are made. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I love that would be appropriate. But um, yeah, so that to your point, Hank, energy. And the other thing is in the Stellar Style class that we just launched, which is just a beautiful program. I watched again because I was really hanging out all day. I watched the replay of Sarah and Jen's first. Sarah, by the way, Sarah, you did an amazing job. It is just so awesome. But a lot of the women came on and shared why they joined the program. And there wasn't just one, but there was at least least two, maybe three that said they sometimes don't go to events because they can't find stuff. They can't get dressed. They're exhausted and they just don't go. Yes. And I think that that, that um, fear of not looking right, that fear of being wrong, mm -hmm. um, that sort of, we look at ourselves and think, no, no, no. And you have taught us to look at ourselves and say, yes, yes, yes. And Absolutely. here's how to do that. I mean, I'm always reminded of that scene in The Devil Wears Prada where she, where um, the Meryl Streep character says, you call this blue. You know, this is cobalt blue. And we have all worked to give you the exact color that this is. And you will love this color. And here's why. And when, when Andy says, those two belts look just the same. And the two women look at each other like, no. no. <laughs> and, 
Um, and it's so much fun to know that if you push up a sleeve or flip up a collar or just get a size smaller or a size larger, it's not about the size. It's how we do that a lot, going. Hank. With Hank, it's we do that a lot. Uh, we'll say this is good, but this one, one size smaller or one size bigger will be better. And the other thing I do for you, Hank, and I know you get this, but it's a great tip for the audience. We have so much fun with our clothes. I mean, it's an art project and it's super fun. I never leave, and she knows this to be true, and I usually do it the last 15 minutes. I put together the real outfits for you. Like go to Starbucks <laughs> and calls, go to dinner. Um, so I, and that's what that program does teach, obviously. It's how to take your life in your, you know, staring into the abyss of the closet, make it manageable, which is organization, train your own eye to understand the style, shapes, colors, details, and how they talk to each other. And some people are at a high level of knowledge on that. Other people, we're going to give them the basics. But then you don't leave that program without having anywhere from 15 to 35, depending on your goals, outfits put together. I mean, and does it bring tears to your eyes when you see how people look at themselves in the mirror? When oh, you take yeah. the clothes that they already have and put yeah. them together in the way that they could be best? Oh, yeah. I think anyone, um, Sarah, Jen, Kathy, all the stylists that worked here, all the stylists that tune into the program, um, you go into like a, um, I mean, I do it with you all the time. I go into like a really happy two hour, whatever it is, I, I, nothing. It's just pure joy. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm not thinking. And when you make somebody happy, like with you, it's more happy. But I've worked with people like I, I there's a man, a guy actually that I think about was at Milton's on Route 9 and Chestnut Hill and really great guy and just being dinged on executive presence. Ding, ding, ding. Big guy, um, carried a lot of weight. You know, you get to know people pretty fast, was really unhealthy lifestyle and he knew it. Getting on a plane, big, big job. And he was presenting at a tech conference. He's, some of you might even know, he, he's just, he works for one of the top brands um, here in the Boston area. But I got him jeans like the CEO said, I want him in jeans. I want him, you know, at a tech conference representing our company as a tech leader. And that was probably one of my most memorable because he was this big guy who was very afraid of the whole process. And he was hugging me. Oh, and wow. and then to follow him and to hear him say that he he nailed it. He was working with an executive coach to do a lot of the prep on the speech and everything. But without that piece that I did for him, he wouldn't have owned it. He wouldn't have felt the way that he did. So, oh, so yeah, absolutely. And even some of the women that I work for with in our programs um, that have been through abusive situations situations, homelessness, we treat them the same. And actually a lot of your clothes go to that program, Hank. So thank you so much. That's pretty powerful. When they say, I feel pretty for the first time, um, you gave me the confidence to nail that interview. And then you know that money is going to provide for their family, for their children. There's no man in the house. They're, so you're giving them a tool of confidence. You're laying, And one woman said to me after I did her work she said you know she was living in Needham and I said talk to me about what you do on the playground like what you do with your kids and she said oh I'm over at the Neiman, uh, Newman playground and she said all the moms have crossbody bags so didn't I go get her it was probably yours friend I put the crossbody bag on her and you would have thought I gave her a million dollars but to your point it was fitting in with her peer group living in a town like Needham in that kind of circumstance. So that's the stuff that never gets old. And it's, uh, frankly, we have a wonderful team and Sarah and Jen and Kathy are just kicking it. I still work with private clients like you. Um, you know, it's hard to do everything when you're running the company, but it never gets old. I don't, I, it, it's just, it, and it keeps me very on trend. It keeps me knowing what people are thinking about. And I, we're going to go a little late tonight because you're just so interesting. But can you, oh, I'm going to switch the table. Can you talk because you're still going, you're still reporting on Channel 7. What's going on, in your opinion, what's going on with um, return to work dress codes? What are you seeing? Um, it's really interesting because I think um, over the, even before the pandemic, um, the, the clothes that reporters were wearing were getting a little bit more relaxed. And I say that in a good way, a little bit more modern. I mean, I've been a television reporter for a long time, as I was saying before. And the, for years and years and years, decades, there would have, I would never have gone to work without a jacket, a blazer, right. and a blouse, and a, you know, a pin or a necklace or a brooch or something like that. That's very, very 
um, conservative, very conservative. I think there was a long time when women were trying to look like uh, men, the, mm -hmm. the, the female version of men. And then we all started thinking, well, you know, maybe I don't have to look that sort of masculine unless I want to, which is a cool look. You know, that white shirt with the collar flipped up and a black jacket, you know, and pearls underneath can look pretty cool. Um, even though it's really just a black jacket and pearls, you know, you jazz it up. So I think now return to work is a little more relaxed. Mm -hmm. I think it's still pulled together. We all still look very sleek and stylish, but there are a lot of sneakers going on. A lot, a lot of cool. It's the shoes that are changing yeah. because wearing stilettos, um, wearing high heels. I think we've all begun to think, why did I do that again? You know, I, they're beautiful and they look great and I adore mine. But if I have seen, and even in, in writer world, I do a lot of, um, I see a lot of people in author world internationally. Mm -hmm. And I have a pal who lives in the UK in London and she just sent, put up a picture of her going to an absolute gala, you know, the fanciest of fancies and the fanciest of fancy dresses and running shoes, not running shoes, but trainers, they call them cool, beautiful, but nevertheless, rubber soled shoes. So I think right now in business, um, there, and you can help us all with this. I think there's, it's not sloppy and it's not what you would wear at home. It's chic, but a little more comfortable rather than, you know, putting ourselves into tight jackets where you, and, and huge shoulders where you can't breathe and mm -hmm. pencils right, that you can wear and sit and high heels. I don't, think that's the right look anymore. Um, right. I think it's looser, cooler, younger, and that takes a lot of confidence because we're not used to that. We're not right. used to that. Um, right. Even dresses without jackets, that was craziness. You know, dress without a jacket, you would never do that. Now, now it's a little bit more of a balance. Right. What do you think? Um, oh, yeah. I mean, and by the way, Hank's two books that were just sitting in my office and I've read both of them. They're awesome. So a little plug here for my friend. Um, and I love reading. This had a lot of fashion in it. So I love yes. that. Um, oh my goodness. The dress codes have really relaxed, but it's not every you, to your, everybody wants to look polished. Um, like an oversized blazer is back. You know, that look is back, but it's not the way we wore it in the eighties. It's with a t-shirt. It's with a relaxed pant with a sneaker. And a sneaker can have a heel on it. It can have a lot of soul. If you're not a sneaker person, the loafers are really back. And loafers can be, oh, God, I'm sitting here. Loafers can be really conservative and loafers can be really edgy. Mm -hmm. So there's a, um, there's devil in the details. And that's the, I think that's why the 90 day program is doing so well, actually. People want to get rid of the stuff that doesn't work anymore. They want to keep the winners and then relax. So, Hank, I think, you know, the other thing is leggings. We went, we went I think it was last week's program. I can't remember anymore. Oh yeah, we did this bust the style myth, and we busted the, the the myth that leggings weren't pants. Leggings are now pants. <laughs> like you can wear leggings to the office with the right top, but you've got to be careful. You, you know, you don't want to look like, ma'am, you forgot your skirt. <laughs> <laughs> right, but there's, but you know what I mean. Like you could definitely do a, a very nice legging with the appropriate top, appropriate yeah. shoe, and not look like you're going to the gym. Other things like I've seen the return of the trench coat, which I really love. So I think that that's a signal that people are wanting to wrap themselves in some elegance, have the outerwear be the more formal because they're not quite sure. So I've seen mine are coming out. I, I took a, a coat. I wore it to Bell the Ball, actually. I hadn't worn it in a long time and I haven't taken it off. It's this lightweight trench, the tan color, and it looked, what did I wear it with? Oh, I had on jeans and a, just a simple top and I had cowboy boots on and I had sneakers on in the course of the day and the coat just looked super with both. So I'm seeing that. I'm definitely seeing the new fabrics. Uh, sneakers, to your point, are everywhere. Um, there's some people that want their heels. Yeah. And, yeah, and so that's great. And I'll wear mine too. Absolutely. So is, so is that what we call them? Sneakers that no, no matter how they're, they're tied or no matter oh, how sneakers. they have Velcro or pull on or ties or whatever it's their sneakers. We call them runners, runners, sneakers, athletic shoes. Uh, and boy, are those companies really capitalizing Hank. Are the Adidas and Nike and well, once Helen Mirren started once Helen Mirren started wearing them, you know, to add to some gala event. I thought, all right, if Helen Mirren can do it, I can do it. 
Absolutely. You definitely can, especially with your height. But OK, we've, we've just got a couple minutes left. Do not just disappoint our people and me. <laughs> what do you got over there? Show us your stuff. All right. So I, you have uh, Mary Lou has not seen this before. So this could be disasters. I'm going to show you one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six things really, really fast. They could be disasters. I don't know. So we don't know. And it can all go back. You know. you and you'll you see how know. nice I am. You see how nice. <laughs> Priscilla Fawcett is saying, I'm having trouble wearing sneakers with dresses. It looks really cute. It looks cute. And it's, she's cute. Bouncy, like the cutest bouncy and confident. Get your eye used to it. I'm going to take over from you, Mary Lou. Okay. Get your eye used to it. It's just that your eye is not used to it. If the proportion of your dress is right, maybe it's a little wider of a skirt. Maybe it's a little longer of a skirt and cute little sneakers. You'll love it and you'll feel really confident and fun. It, I, I want to see. We want to see a picture of you in that dress with those sneakers. I bet you're gonna look. I bet you're gonna look right. Okay. So really, really fast. Let's see. Here's the first thing. This okay. is. Can you? I don't know if you can see it. This is a short sleeved leather black crop. Very cropped. Very pretty, Hank. Very cropped jacket. Um, it's hard to tell the proportion. Hello, I'm in here. It's hard to tell the proportion, but it's. Um, if you wore a high waisted pant, yeah, which you it would come to right, it would come. That's the row. What's what's the maker? Is that the row? This is Michael Kors. Michael oh, Kors. Okay. And it's it's got a little bit of a padded shoulder and a turned up collar, oh. and 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 short sleeves. You can see three quarter length. It's okay, audience. Say. If you think she should keep it, put a thumbs up in the chat. <laughs> and then oh, no, she this can later and look. I say a big thumbs up. I think that's gorgeous. I love the new proportion. And Hank has a lot. Hank is tall, five seven, five eight. Yeah. She wears those high waisted pants and skirts really well. And we're always so what we do, which is really great. A lot of times we put a, a really cool. But she's got incredible belts. We'll do a really cool belt with that kind of a jacket because it really plays off the silhouette. So yeah. A plus. Okay. Well, right. so, so here is now. I know you're going to be surprised by this. But this is another leather jacket, but it's a little longer. Oh, Gosh, it's Acris. And you can see that it's just very, very blue. It's oh, just, it has turn up sleeves. And here is the back. It's just a straight, it's just a straight back. And so I'm sort of thinking it's instead of a Levi jacket, in the same realm as a Levi jacket. I could just substitute out this very, very, it looks very blue on, on this video. You, need, oh, you know what I love about it? A couple things. First of all, uh, that's another thing I'm seeing. People kind of getting, moving beyond like the denim jackets with everything and adopting more elegant layering pieces. So yeah. that, I mean, Tank has so many beautiful black dresses like that would simply a black dress for your world would be perfect the other thing about that that's what i mean about the leggings being relevant that's a long leather jacket if she wore um like really beautiful black leggings with that and a booty which i know you have that's just so sharp that's well, like you know now i'm saying facebook user is saying no oh oh my god people that. saying i love the color i mean this color is very pretty and the other thing I would do with that because it's long, hold it up again, Hank. Well, it's shortish. It's yeah, shortish. It's long. long. It's it's longer. I longer. It's longer than short. You could do a scarf, like throw a scarf under. And I love it with you. I love it with the black. You could also Thanks. do white jeans with that, white t shirt. You go to Nantucket. Oh, a white dress, even a white dress in the summer. I would almost make a little old school. I would do white jeans. I would do a white t shirt. I wouldn't do She'll the white tell dress. you. She'll tell you. It's like, that you, what Mary Lou usually says is, that had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, you can do better, that. Hank. You can do better. <laughs> All right. So, and this one. Okay. So, are you ready for this? Yep. I'm ready. What is it? I think I like it. Ooh. It's a white, it's a big white leather jacket. Well, you all went all out in the leather, huh? I did because this is a boxy or oh, the boxy boyfriend boxy boyfriend jacket. Mm -hmm. It looks amazing. It's it, it's it's very buttery soft, um, not stiff at all. I mean, the sleeves push up, and I really you'll just have to come over it. You'll just have to come okay, over. I'm coming it. over as soon as I wait. I gotta just get off the crutches. Those of you that are late, I am on darn crutches. That's why I'm oh. on tanks. Um, but not too the Zoom is not doing this justice. You just really. No, I, and, and I want to see it on you. I want to make sure it's not too big. And, and, and for this, I got this graphic tee. Ooh, there you go. 
which okay. is a Murakami, who is a Japanese author. Oh, let me see if you can oh, see. Oh, you know, that, that would look great under the blue, too. You see how it's very complicated and cool. Yeah. And then good. under this blue jacket, too, Hank, that T-shirt. All right, let's try it. You having fun, you all? I'm having a great time. <laughs> I want to read the comments after the show. So, um, oh, you, I mean, you definitely could. Yeah, I like the red. I like how it's reading the red and the white and with yeah. white jeans. Yeah. I mean, it's very hip. It's a very, it's a very hip t-shirt. And then the other thing, which is kind of out there, but I do think it might work, is this skirt. Oh, which I is love. Almost a little bit longer than mid-calf. It's like chalet very floaty oh i love it and i think for spring this could really work with and i don't know whether i've missed the season but with i have brown slouchy ooh, can you see these are yeah. brown suede yeah. very slouchy boots oh yeah we talked about those um i think that's like september perfect september that's the skirt true. and the skirt yeah. and the boots yeah i do too, yeah. I do too. Yeah. Really but you have to the, the boots were on sale so i had to grab them when i could grab them knowing that they would still be perfect when September comes. So, okay. Well, so I think never... you got an A plus, Missy. Oh. I, hope, I hope every, I can't see the comments. And Sarah's saying to me, I can't comment anymore. I think there's too many comments in well, there. So everybody's saying, some Facebook saying are comment. saying no, no, no about something. So there's many yeses and many noes. And I don't know. Um, oh, I don't we don't know. Which one I don't know. Who you are. So we'll have to make up our own rules. But um, before I let you go, and Sarah's saying it's we don't we don't usually go this late, but this Ooh. is so fun. Um, and I had a day, people, and I got my Hank here with me, and I love it. Talk to us about the book. What's going on? Oh my golly, this is a fast-paced, page-turning thriller, which is wonderful for you to escape. Mm -hmm. I always say it's always safe inside a book, and when times like this are happening, it is the perfect time for a riveting, compelling, twisty psychological suspense, two smart women face off in a high stakes psychological cat and mouse game to prove their truth about a devastating childhood betrayal. But which character is the cat and which one is the mouse? Okay. And that is her perfect life. Okay, and just one more, tell us about this one. Oh my goodness, that is, um, a, that is a twisty page turner. You know I write the Hank DNA, is I want you to miss your stop on the T because you're reading this book. And this is how far would you go to protect your family? And mm -hmm. if you had a family secret that you knew that if it were told would ruin your family, but if it were, if, it, if you told it on the other hand would save thousands of people, what would you do? Would you tell the secret? Would you save the people? thousands of people or would you save your family's reputation wow. what would you do and who will be the first to lie wow okay well that is if you guys are looking for some good reads over this long I mean, if, you, time. if you like harlan coben lisa scottolini lisa gardner tess garretson um ruth ware or sarah peckin and those kinds mm -hmm. of wonderful twisty stories that's exactly what these are and her perfect life was just nominated for the agatha award for best novel of the year so mm -hmm. that is as good as it gets i am thrilled oh so are we well hank thank you so much you are a fan favorite over here and we will have you back so guys i'm going in that closet as soon as i'm able to walk because i have to go up to the attic i can't like just go over there and not do my whole job so we're going to have hank back and we will show you what we did with those jackets and that skirt. How's that? But Hank, thank you so much. And all of you, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful holiday weekend, no matter what you're celebrating. And thanks for tuning in. And as I always say, you show up for us, we show up for you. And I won't be on next week because I'll be in Nashville, but I'll be on the week after to show you what I saw at that conference, what I shopped, what I got. And then we'll be back real soon with Hank in the next couple of weeks. So, all right, everybody, have a great rest of the night. Good we'll night. Bye-bye. Thank you, Hank. Thank you.